Limpopo Health MEC Popi Ramatuba has been criticized for publicly confronting senior managers at Ritabile Clinic outside Bulukwane. In a widely circulated video, she's seen scolding a female staff member for sitting while patients wait in long queues. You'll remember last week here on Daytime Update, we spoke to the health MEC and she told us about a number of problems uh, plaguing that particular clinic. She joins us now for an update as she had made it known at the time that there will be consequences. MEC Ramatuba, thank you very much for availing yourself this afternoon. Perhaps let's just go back to that conversation and what you told us about the problems facing this clinic. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dudu, and afternoon to all your viewers out there. What, what uh, we, we want to reiterate uh, that if you were to go to the archives, for instance, of the local media, both print and electronic, you're going to see the challenges that are facing this particular clinic. And as I've indicated, a number of investigations were done previously, recommendations were made. I still remember even the Richards did their own uh, survey and they provided with their own uh, findings, but we have not seen any improvement that is happening. Uh, of course, there are also other some employees, uh, to my knowledge, who have been going through the labor relations processes of some were suspended at some stage, some going through discipline, but you will understand how the, the time that it takes uh, for those processes to really find to reach conclusion. So, so you, 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 it, it, it has been a lot of issues. That is why maybe when you see a majority of people uh, within the province and even outside the province are able to understand uh, the, the situation that one was faced in during the unannounced visit. Mm. And hence you can see that uh, while there are those other ones, depending on what positions are you do, do. If, for instance, you are an opposition party, which I've seen their statement recently, you will definitely oppose everything that the ruling party is doing, even if it means speaking for the poor and the vulnerable, because to you, you are very worried that those that you thought you would use to support are now having confidence in their system. The one journalist today said to me that it's a local journalist. In the past, uh, patients will complain to them about that health center, but they were surprised while recently they are no longer receiving complaints. And the answer is simple, because when they report to us as head office, whether it's the MEC or HOD or executive, we do act and we do respond to their satisfaction. So that will not be music in the ears of those who are in the opposition party. If you look at the trade union representative, you should expect that because they become lawyers, uh, if not just ordinary lawyers, criminal lawyers, for example, where to them you must defend everything that your worker does. And forgetting that trade union, especially in the public sector, must be transformative in their own nature because they understand their members, who are also our employees, are there to serve the patients. As such, when they do something wrong, we need to work together. Just like when they do something good, the department is the first to praise them. Now, to come to your response in terms of the updates, as I've already indicated that the other processes take time. You can't just make a, a conclusion and say, you are fired, you are what? They have to go through the proper investigations. We must get the report uh, the, with the recommendations. And based on the recommendations, the head of the department must be able to act. But that's why I keep on saying to the public, as a politician, when I'm called that there is a, a challenge, because I am the voice of the public, the voice of the poor and the poorest, when I found a challenge of them being denied access to health because they don't have eight rand to buy masks, I can't wait to say let the HOD or let me call them to boardrooms. I keep on saying this is a, a, a life and death situation because the security guard who is chasing away that patient 
does not even have an understanding because they don't even know what is it to triage a patient. They don't know the condition of that patient. It might be a pregnant woman who is in labor who can go and deliver just at the clinic, outside the clinic, and the challenge becomes the very same MEC. And the litigations that we have, some of them are as a result of this action. Hence, you saw me acting immediately and saying, this must stop, and then we'll deal with the other issues later. Because and the Mr. nature... Ramachipa, please, if you would allow me to uh, just join you. While we appreciate that the processes or these processes take time, as you've outlined, um, perhaps let's just go back to our conversation from last week. And this is what you told us. Please, let's take a look. Listen at this. The reality is that uh, Retail Health Centre does not have management that inspire the confidence uh, to me and also to the public. Um, why, why generally there's this issue of shortages? What I say in return relates perceived shortage. If you have got four midwives and you have got those patients that were there were probably nine pregnant women who are here for antenatal clinic. And then you are told we had a delivery and it was only one delivery from seven o'clock to half past one. So when you look at the workload that they were complaining about, it does not make sense. And the midwife who's supposed to be their supervisor indicated to me that she's in the office. She doesn't count herself as being operational. And, and, and for me, I was saying, uh, you, the, the reason we appoint you as an operational manager who's a midwife to supervise other midwives is because when there's a crisis, you must be able to go in and help. Let me see, Ramatuba, surely that sends chills down your spine, especially when you think of those desperate pregnant women um, who have people who are working at a clinic that does not even inspire confidence in you. If anything, COVID-19 taught us that government is able to move with speed and sort things out. And so when we speak of processes taking time and waiting for a report, when you saw yourself, pregnant women who were desperately waiting to get attention from this particular clinic, um, why are we still then waiting for processes that take time? How, how long does it take? Uh, uh, look, Dudu, what I'm saying to you, you have just answered many people who are saying, why didn't I go to the boardroom and discuss with these uh, managers? Uh, why are they queue and all that? You have answered that question that has always been a, a bone of attack from those who, are, who have got a descending view. Uh, to say, this is health, this is pregnant women, that's why they're and there. I, we sorted those queues. If you remember, I said 20 minutes later, the, the ones who were waiting for the files, all of them received their files. An hour later, all the pregnant women who were there for antenatal visit follow-up were seen. Uh, because it's not that we do not have the capacity. The issue is that we do not have the positive attitude that is needed. We can provide them with a state of art buildings, but if we don't provide with what I always tell to them, state-of-the-art attitude, we're still going to have these problems. So what I'm talking to you about here is that, remember I said we're going to investigate, uh, our risk will be currently investigating this allegation that the masks are being probably stolen or taken from the facility and be sold. That I cannot respond to. It needs a uh, proper, those who are qualified to investigate, I can't make conclusion, but my finding was that indeed the, the security guard, if you don't have a mask, they will not allow you entrance you, if, unless you can buy. And there was a lady buy, selling. When you come to the managers that you are talking about, um, the, there is one uh, operational manager who, who is currently an, an acting operational manager, which we are uh, uh, attending to, to that matter. Uh, in terms of the management, I, I wouldn't want to go, come and pronounce uh, what the head of department is going to present to me as the current intervention here on the media. It, it will be, I will still repeat, in terms of the intervention on management, it's something that is going to be urgently done on an interim base. But what I can tell you is that the crisis that was facing me at that time, which was patient having to sit there for more from seven in the morning until half past one without being attended, was resolved within 30 minutes' time. So that is a positive. 
But however, with, because when I monitor them this whole week, the patients are, if you go there now, you'll find that patients have been attended to. Because of that uh, incident, everyone now gets to work and do what is supposed to done. Because of what we had discussed, everybody is doing their work. So sometimes it probably needs a crisis so that you find the desirable results that we are now seeing at the end. The report that I'm getting now, uh, I'm told I I even our senior leaders who went there, for instance, the executive mayor yesterday, uh, the secretary of the ruling party in the region, they saw a different return. This is what we wanted to see. So, but we're saying the long term and the findings of some of these allegations will not be responded to within a day. We can't, it, the labor relation doesn't allow me, even though I said to those nurses at that time to say, uh, if as, an, as a registered clerk, uh, in the next 30 minutes you have not opened files, you must apply for a job. It was said for that, but in, in the true sense, you, you have to follow the labor relations process uh, of charging discipline. And hence I was saying to you, just like the justice system in our country, it's a sad story that labor relations process takes forever. If it was my own wish and how I can, I would definitely say within 30 days, it's somebody we should have concluded about the case. There are cases that internally within 30 days we might conclude, but the person still goes to CCMA. Once the person appeals, then the, the case still remains. The, the person is still in your employment. Even if after CCMA there will be a ruling that is made, the person can still decide to go to labor court. Believe me, the person will still be in our employment. So you should understand the frustrations and the challenges. And these laws are meant to protect uh, the very same workers. Uh, it's unfortunate that sometimes while they are there to protect the workers, it, they end up uh, frustrating the whole system because you will have somebody appealing after appealing when actually that person continue to cause this damage in the facility because if a person really is not fit enough to be in the a workplace, you, you are going to, to have to suffer. And like I said previously, Unfortunately, in the sector that some of us are operating within, the problem is that when you have such uh, challenges or people failing to be decisive or people failing to execute their duties, people die unfortunately. Let me see, Ramatuba, very quickly for us. We've got about 10 seconds, so you stand by your interventions, and this is something you plan on doing uh, and, and you're not intending to stop anytime soon. Look, this depends on when I arrive in a situation. My first question is, what happens to the lives of innocent patients? If the patient's lives are at risk, I must act in a manner which is going to protect the patient's lives. The rest of the other issues, we will deal with them at the boardroom. If it means do, do I myself must stop being an MEC and start working and seeing patients. If they didn't have doctors at that time and it was a reason, but they had six doctors who were waiting for patients because patients did not have funds. If the situation was as a result of the doctors, I have done it in, in, in several aid. That was, that's why I keep my registration with council open. I will stop being an MEC and become a, a doctor and help the patient. If it involves the nurse, the nurse manager must do the same. If it involves security, the security manager must do the same. What we are simply saying is that in the sector that we are operating in, there is no room to sit comfortable and say you are a manager. When disaster hits, as the unit manager, you must walk the talk and walk together with your workers. Many of you used to ask me, why do I vaccinate? When I visit a vaccination site and I'm told, they only vaccinate 10 people a day. I would go there and want to know what are the problems. And in most cases, you have seen me sitting down with them and show them how it's done. That is what we say leadership. You work with your team. This is what I'm teaching 
all our managers to say, let's begin to say, when our workers, we know they are overwhelmed with the workload, it is not fair for us to sit in our office. I think people must understand that. There was no insight on work. The issue was to say, managers, leave your comfort office and manage by walking about, pick up the problems yourself, let it not be the MEC or the media to pick up your problems. Pick them up yourself, resolve them, then you will see we won't be facing challenges from our communities. Limpopo Health MEC Poppy Ramatuba with an update on Ritabile Clinic where women who went for antenatal care were waiting for hours on end without any help. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the update.